empty and light like a nut on a sea of oil. And an atmosphere of quiet wraps me about from the turmoil and clamour of life. I stand apart from living. Apart and holy, I stand in my new gained growth of idleness. I stand as stood the Shekinah of yore in the holy of holies. I walk the streets smoking my pipe, and I love the dallying shop girl that leans with rounded stern to look at the fashions. And I hate the bustling citizen, the eager and hurrying man of affairs I hate, because he bears his intolerance writ on his face, and every movement and word of him tells me how much he hates me. I love night in the city, the lighted streets and the swinging gate of harlots. I love cool, pale morning in the empty by streets, with only here and there a female figure, a cleaner with lifted dress and the key in her hand, a girl or two play in a corner of a wasteland, tumbling and showing their legs and crying out to me gaily.
icicle-hung architecture, strung white fleece round the Baroque square. I saw her face freeze in her fur. Then my lips ran to her with fire from the chimney corner of the room where I had waited in my chair. I kissed their heat against her skin and watched the red make the white bloom. While at my care, her smiling eyes shone with the brilliance of the ice outside whose dazzling they brought in. That day, until this, I forgot. How is it now I so remember who, when she came indoors, saw not the passion of her white December? The snowfall came last night and played a silent saraband of white across the land. A blank of blandness to the sight, muffling creature cries. A feature here, the frozen lake, subservient, receives each sundry flake shuffling down from surly, sultry, sullen skies. It leaves the ache of solid, pearly earth to teach a regiment of worms to know, despite their waggling worth, that nature's terms are not for haggling. The morning's ermine coat a vernissage of created, fresh created prints, perhaps with hints or more, a pure collage of often pictured feline tints of spore, at best a test, it seemed, of what imagination might invest a deemed and dreamlike congregation. Now, though, most of all, the silence reigns. As though the pall of snow disdains, forbids the slightest sound to show. Quiet, still, unspoken as a mound of feathers. Token of the way the ground surrenders to the weather's will.
my mother's house contained her world, all that she was therein expressed. Emptied of what she once had valued, it's as if her life's dispersed, her character obliterated, surviving now in memory alone, until we too, as fated, leave the living family. As each picture is removed, the dust lines left around the walls leave only a fair, faint ghost of love to echo these deserted halls. All these enigmas crowd the rooms my mother once inhabited. Vacant now, her power perfumes the lives of all who visited. Though her house be empty, bared for other occupants, she lives behind my eyes, and I am prepared to keep her idealism alive. A fond farewell, and then we part. All that was familiar, gone. Yet each of us, within our heart, treasuring memories, all life long.
no country for old men. Though young in one another's arms, birds in the trees. Those dying generation, at their song, the salmon pours. The mackerel crowded seas, fish, flesh or fowl, commend all summer long. Whatever is begotten, born, and dies. Caught in that sensual music, all neglect. Monuments of unaging intellect. An aged man is but a paltry thing. A tattered coat upon a stick. Unless soul clap its hands and sing and louder sing for every tatter in its mortal dress nor is there singing school but studying monuments of its own magnificence and therefore i have sailed the seas and come to the holy city of byzantium O oh, sages Standing in God's holy fire, as in the gold mosaic of a wall. Come from the holy fire, pern in a gyre, and be the singing masters of my soul. Consume my heart away. Sick with desire and fastened to a dying animal that knows not what it is. And gather me into the artifice of eternity. Once out of nature, I shall never take my bodily form from any natural thing, but such a form as Grecian goldsmiths make of hammered gold and gold enamelling, to keep a drowsy emperor awake or set upon a golden bow to sing to lords and ladies of Byzantium of what is past or passing or yet to come.